So oncologists, I don't think, still really get the whole real-world evidence story. And it's funny, too, because if you ask them common questions about their practice, for instance, what dose is their starting dose of a drug called capecitabine or Zolota? They give you a dose that's not the package insert label dose. They give you a dose that's lower. Why do they do that? Well, they're using their own real-world evidence, their own observations and those of their peers to make an adjustment based on the fact that the trial was clearly done in a healthier, more robust population, and that in the real world, that dose isn't tolerated. Schedule design. Maybe a drug like Sutent was originally approved three weeks on, one week off. But doctors quickly realized that that third week was almost impossible to give, so they modified instead of four weeks on, two weeks off, two weeks on, one week off. That's real world evidence. It's not codified in the form of a trial, and that's what's changed. Not just making this kind of an ad hoc observational use of, of evidence, but rather putting into trial design and really treating it as if it were a clinical trial so you can validate that these aren't just random observations, but they're concrete and they are useful and meaningful to the way we practice. We did that this year in our work that we submitted to this meeting. We have six posters at ASH this year. Some of those are in CAR-T, three in CAR-T. Two of those looked at the FAERS database. This is the FDA's adverse event reporting database, which is online available to all. But what you can do is go through there and really understand, are there age differences in the toxicities like cytokine release syndrome or neurotoxicity? Are there different factors that may be predictive of that toxicity. We can do the same thing looking at transplant populations as we did in Hodgkin's disease. We can do real world evidence in the form of doing what used to be called market research in which we ask enough physicians in order to understand their patterns of care and preferences so we can start to understand why certain things become adopted and certain things don't. And that's the kind of work we brought to the table this year that Ash clearly thought was useful because they not only accepted them in the form of abstracts, but they elevated them to posters.